Right. Right. That's better. Ah, I see you back again. I see you back again. Well, I'm glad you are because I have. Because when we left, uh, left part one of Professor Thomas Jones versus Jack Jack Axon and the Jonah Jones's decision, part one we saw Thomas tracking his uh, his sis his sister's murderer being trapped on the ground in a showdown with his sister's murderer, who, if you've all seen the opening of uh, Sneak Peek, uh, which is linked in uh, the uh, first, in part one, that uh, the man behind his sister's murder is, um, is one of the most feared bouncy hunters in all of Europe, and also an, uh, a man from Iceland, Jack Jackson. And also, Beth ran back. Beth, Thomas, ja Thomas's siren wife, ran back to Middle World to her to fight, get help. Where his little brother Jonah is on trial for six crimes he did not commit. But Beth has managed to get had a few people to help her fight. I endure him. Well, help save Thomas is what I meant to say. Now, time for part two. Are you all sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. <coughs> Thomas, uh, Professor Thomas Jones uh, and uh, versus uh, Jack Jackson and Jonah Jones's decision, part two. Thomas dodged another slash from Jackson's dagger and punched the bouncy hunter in the face. Even with your magic weakened, Pugh. you still you can still put up a fight. Jackson growled as he spat out a mouthful of blood and raised his dagger as Thomas collapsed to his knee. He is after three hours of fighting the bounty hunter, but as Thomas struck with his sword, the bounty hunter knocked the sword out of his hand and it clattered to the ground. Jackson then grabbed Thomas by the back of his hair, pulled his head back, and put the dagger to his neck. Now I'm go going to do what Cornelius Segan couldn't. I'm going to kill you nice and... But before Jackson could finish, there was a loud bang, and, and Jackson was blown back in a shower of rubble and dust. Thomas collapsed onto his shoulder with a painful thud. Dazed, he heard Beth and Jonah's voices. Then, he felt strong hands lift him to his feet and heard the voices of, says of Captain Bruce and Commander West in his ears. Come on, Thomas, steady now, said Chris on his right. That's, a, that's it, Professor. Up you get. Go steady now. Now, said Jake on his left. After, then they he heard Toby yelp. Uh, they heard Toby yelp, and they turned to see him knocked onto his back with Jackson crouched on top of him with one ha hand on his throat and the other raising his dagger. I hate peacekeepers. But I love killing people like you slowly and painfully, he growled savagely as Toby's face began to turn purple. But suddenly there was a blast of bluish purple energy that hit the, hit the bounty hunter in the chest and knocked him off Toby. Thomas turned to see Merlin the Wise, his grandfather, Emrys the Great, his old friend, and Johnny Sol Johnny Salt, his, uh, his and Jonah's friend and mentor, and then he saw Jonah and Beth. Thomas! Catch! Jonah yelled and tossed his own longsword to his brother. Chris and Jake let Thomas go just in time to catch the longsword. Thanks, Jonah! Thomas yelled as he ran forward, kicked the bounty hunter in the chest, freeing Toby just as Jackson tried to climb onto him again. And as Jackson crashed onto his back, Thomas placed his boots on, 
on his chest and placed the sword tip at his throat. Are you gonna, are you gonna kill me, Professor Jones? <laughs> Jackson sniggered, a broad smile on his ugly, scarred and bloody face. Thomas's blood boiled as he pressed his boot and the sword down harder. I have to admit, I'd love to, because you murdered mine and Jonas's sister. So yes, I will kill you, Thomas snarled as his blood boiled in his veins. But then he felt some something soft clasp his ha hand on the sword handle. He recognised the scent of flowers and heard of the familiar soft voice. Thomas, if you kill him, you'll be just as bad as him. We can take him back to the Republic and, he and have him stand trial in Jonah's place, Beth, sa Beth said reassuringly. Thomas calmed down as Emrys then stepped forward. We're taking you. We're taking you to Middle World, he snarled. Then he drew his wand from his, his wand from his blue and brown mage robes. Oops. The colour of his eyes flashed green and silver chains wrapped around the bouncy hunter from his ankles to his shoulders. Let's go home, shall we? Emrys then asked Merlin, who nodded as the three the best peacekeepers lifted Jackson to his feet. Then, Emrys reached uh, to, towards a pouch on his belt and pulled out a handful of bright purple dust called, uh, called Portal Time Dust. This was originally created by the Daedric Princes of Oblivion to take over all worlds and bring them to complete darkness. But they were double-crossed by their brother, Sanguin, who wanted the power of the dust and the worlds all to himself. But before he could succeed, Emrys defeated him in battle, locked him in a prison tower in Oblivion, in where he cannot escape from or be he rescued from, and Emrys became the possessor of the portal Time Dust. The wood elf mage took a fistful full of dust, muttered something, and then threw the dust in front of them, and a huge portal to Middle World appeared. Then they all walked through. Then Emrys snapped his fingers, and the portal closed behind them with a loud crack, leaving the wo that world of ashes and dust alone for the rest of eternity. Well, now we are getting to one of my favourite parts of this tale. I'm sorry if there were, hasn't been a lot of battles in it, but this isn't, well, one f a tale full of battle, as you can tell. But, yeah, you'll soon know what's coming next. <clears throat> anyway, I'll get back to this. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> The Court of the Republic was back in session, with Jackson on trial instead of Jonah. Now that the Court is back in session, we can begin the ba Bounty Hunter's trial. Are we clear? Senator Amerson said, and the jury all nodded. It Jack Jackson, member of the Bouncy Hunter's Guild, killer of 57,000 people in Europe, North Africa and the Middle East. You are brought before this court to stand trial for the murder of Catherine Jones, the, the framing of Jonah Jones, and the attempted killing of Bluefire leader and head, head professor of the university, Thomas Jones. What say you in your defence? The Grand Senator asked the bounty hunter him was standing chained in front of the court. I don't deny that I tried to frame Dr. Jonah Jones, that I committed the crimes he was accused of, or that I killed his and Thomas's sister all those years ago. But I am a bounty hunter, 
Cornelius Segan hired me to do this for a large sum of money. But even if you lock me up in Dr. Jones's place, my work is complete, and you have all damaged Dr. Jones's trust in all of you. And if you lock me up, then you will ha have the bouncy hunter as guild come after you all. J the bouncy hunter finished with a triumphant voice. But Grand Senator Amerson wasn't su wasn't even scared, but looked at the bouncy hunter in disgust. It's bouncy hunters like you who that took my wife from me. Your guild disgusts me. I hereby sentence you to a life sentence in Alcatran prison. Take him away! The Grand Senator boomed and then struck his gavel down hard. Then Chris and Jake came and took the bounty hunter away for transportation to Alcatran prison. A few minutes later, Jonah was standing uh, before the Sorcerer Council in, at the Sorcerer Temple. Thomas, along with Beth, Johnny and, L and Matation Lily Rose, Thomas's protector and best friend, and Jonah's girlfriend, stood with Merlin, Emrys, and the rest of the council before Jonah. Before we set, start anything else, we all must uh, first give uh, you our apologies for what, what we put you through, Jonah, Emre said Merlin. Everyone nodded. Then a tall, dark-skinned sorcerer in dark green and pale blue robes, with a thick black beard and hair, cleared his throat. <coughs> well, anyway. Little did you know, Dr. Jones, that this was actually your sorcerer trials, he said. But before Jonah could angrily retort, Lily Rose stepped forward. What Master Stephen the Vast uh, is trying to say is uh, that the sorcerer trials work in very different ways. Thomas's were the same, but you passed the trials. Lily Rose said calmly. Then, no, the human dog girl reached into her black leather coat and pulled out a large folder. Oh, I won bet you're wondering what the folder is, aren't you? Well, you'll find out soon enough. Right. We, the Blue Fire Organization and the Sorcerer Order, all offer you offer our apologies for what you, you went through, and we are offering your place in the Order and Blue Fire back with a clean slate and full promotion. She smiled and he held out the folder to Jonah. Then Thomas stepped forward and stood beside his protector and best friend. We're asking you back, Jonah. I am asking you to come back, Thomas said to his little brother. Jonah reached out for the folder, but then took his hand away from the folder. No thanks, no thanks, Jonah said. Then he turned and walked towards the doors. But Thomas and Lily Rose ran towards him. Jonah, wait! Please, we need to talk to you! Thomas yelled as Jonah was halfway to the doors. He stopped and turned to face them. Jonah... Why don't you want this? Lily Rose held up the file. You could have your job and place in the or in the Sorcerer Order back. Why don't you want this? She finished. But Jonah looked at his brother and girlfriend with a sombre look on his face, and his butterfly tattoo turned bright purple with emotion. The council and the board didn't trust me. So how can I trust them? Jonah said in a heavy he tone. I'm sorry, but I just can't trust them um, or be with them anymore. Thomas soon became frantic, trying to appeal to his little brother. But what about us, Jonah? 
Me, Lily Rose, Beth, Johnny, Emrys, and Grandpa. Ah, oh, we supported and stood by you, Thomas said as tears began to form in his blue eyes. Jonah put a reassuring hand on his big brother's shoulder. I know you did, Thomas, and I am grateful for to you all for that. But I can't be here anymore. I can't because I know I will never be as good as you or father in the magical arts. And we both know that half of, of Blue Fire and the Sorcerer Order didn't trust me anyway. And my true ambition is to be the professor and he head of the archaeology, anthropology and mythology departments of the Blue Fire University. Jonah finished confidently. Thomas took a deep breath and nodded. He understood Jonah's decision, as he himself was head of the biology, zoology and ornithology departments, and so on, at the Blue Fire at the university. Then he hugged his little brother. You may not know oh, this, Jonah, he began to whisper to his little brother, but I know how it feels wanting to walk away from Blue Fire and the Order. Thomas and, jo Thomas and Jonah then broke their embrace and turned to the council. Merlin and Emrys nodded, and then the two brothers walked back to Joan's Manor with Lily Rose and Beth beside them, little knowing of what their next adventure would be, but also not knowing that Merlin, Emrys and the rest of the council felt like they had failed Jonah completely and would carry this for the rest of their days in the Sorcerer Order. That is deep, don't you think? On top of Mount Olympus, a beautiful young woman with long shoulder-length black hair, green eyes, bright red lips, a long nose, rosy cheeks, broad shoulders, and wearing a bright purple dress and a black coat, stood in front of a large stone table that was white as, mar as marble and containing a large map of Middle World. I see you have been watching your brothers, said Zeus, god of thunder and king of Mount Olympus, to Kate Jones. Kate jumped and turned quickly. Zeus was the same as ever, tall and muscular, handsome and slightly scarred, his bright red beard and hair still thick and rugged, wearing his large white robe with a gold pin and brown leather belt as a feature. But he was still the kind man she fell in love with. I'm sorry, Zeus. I just... I just miss them so much. Kate sighed. But Zeus put a cup comforting arm around her shoulders. I told you, Kate, you will see them again. When, they ne when their need is greatest, we will see them again, and they will receive our help, Zeus said. Then Kate nodded and kissed Zeus. They then turned and walked to, to the gar gardens of Olympus with the knowledge that Kate would see her brothers again someday and the knowledge of that Thomas and Jonah would need their help to defeat a great evil someday. But for now, Ta Hyma with the god she loved, she fell in love with, until they ne needed to help her the heroes of Middle World. The end. For now. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that, and, uh, well... Well, I just, um, well, as I was, what I'm trying to say is, I hope you enjoyed that story and it tugged at your heartstrings a little, but also that you found it quite lovely and also saw a new take on, on the gods of Olympus. And I might even bring Zeus uh, back again uh, when I write another untold tale for Middle World. But, for now... Let's keep that secret. Well, until next time, 
May the Force be with you to infinity and beyond.